Hi there, I'm John from CNCRA.com, and today I will use my thermwood to cut some plywood. Now the project you'll see me cutting today, um, I can't, you know, the customer is going to be assembling it. So, and it's such a large project, I can't really put it together here in the shop to show you. But I do have years of experience making plywood models, and this is one of them. So if you don't mind the dust, uh, this is something I made with the laser cutter. The dead giveaway with this laser is the contrast that you see here. I could cut this exact same model on, model on the router, you just won't have the contrast, but you'll have exactly the same result. Now in this case here, whenever I model, make models like this, you'll notice that there's interlocking parts. So there's no nails or no hardware to hold all of this together, just glue and clamps to hold the glue until it dries. So what you'll see here is interlocking parts. This is what I mean by it. So you know, you have two pieces of wood here coming to this and to there, together they form this. Now it's the same idea that the customer has for their project when I was uh, cutting out the pieces for the plywood, it's a whole bunch of individual little pieces that also are interlocked together to create the strength and create the final model that they have. Plywood is one of those materials that I've had, been working with for years, almost since I've, my very first CNC was a shop-bought desktop, and I still have it to this day. It's a wonderful machine. And what I did with that is almost all plywood. I was making plywood models from the 3D models that I was designing uh, before I even had or even knew what CNC machines were. In this case here, it's quarter inch plywood, which I have tons of experience with. And it's an interlocking uh, sort of puzzle piece that the customer needed to be done. So in this case here, what I'm doing, I'm going to be using two different bits. One bit is doing the inside part that will lock into the outside part. And so you can just see, I just changed the bit from a one eighth. I believe that then I use the quarter inch bit to carve out all the pieces. What I'm doing is just double checking that I'm going all the way through. I'm still refining and learning uh, how to properly use my thermwood. It's, a, it's an industrial beast, it's an awesome machine to work with, but there's a lot, quite a bit of a learning curve involved with it. And that's what I'm trying to learn uh, as I do these projects, how to do things properly and, and better. <clears throat> In this case here, some of the bits I'm using are actually from my ShopBot PRS Alpha, which is the old ShopBot that I used to use for all of these projects. And the bits are not very long. So what I'm finding out is, as you can see, there's not much give regarding the vacuum system and the piece. Now I have that off, be, the vacuum system is not sucking all the dust out because I'm cutting so many holes and out of this, uh, no vacuum system will be able to hold it down. So since then I've gotten uh, other methods of holding stuff down properly. You can see here at the corners, if you look closely, you can see I actually put screws into the plywood as well to help keep it down. Uh, again, the vacuum system is fantastic, but as soon as you start putting holes through everything, you have lots of air seepage, and no amount of vacuum will hold lots of small little parts. It just doesn't happen. Uh, so you need to have secondary backup systems to make sure that the pushing and the pulling that's happening uh, isn't actually removing the project. And having all the dust on here, I have learned actually helps a little bit with the vacuum because it goes in all the holes that you're creating. Now it does make things a little bit more messy, but it does add a little bit more vacuum. The material we cut today was actually quarter inch plywood, which is exactly the same plywood that we cut for this here. Uh, it's also quarter inch. So if you're looking for custom modeling or that kind of stuff, you know, that's how I got started. When, before cncri.com existed, I had cncking.com, which is still active. Um, I just don't sell the files anymore. And on there, I'd just spend my nights and weekends just modeling and creating models such as what I just showed you. Um, I have hundreds of models that I've made over the years, and that's what led me to the digital format, and that's what led me to my first CNC, which was the ShopBot desktop, which I cut all my models out of, which was a lot of fun, because that's how I learned about CNCs. Before then, I didn't know anything about CNC machines. After that, um, I got the laser, which is the Trotec laser I got, and then I started cutting out all my models using, you know, the laser. Um, after that, I got the ShopBot, a uh, little bit larger one, PRS Alpha, which again, I used to do a lot of customer projects for cncri.com. And of course, all the other machines I used for that too. Then I got a plasma cutter, and now I could do all of these models if I wanted to out of metal. Um, and then I got the Thermwood, which can cut stuff a lot faster, a lot more, uh, same precision but a lot faster than I can with my other machine. And because it has a rigid gantry, I have a lot less sanding to do as well. 
So there's been a natural progressing of progression of CNC machines here in the shop. And every couple of years I get into a new CNC machine and I learn how to use it. And then I upgrade to another one, to another one. So if you're looking for custom models, we can also design them here in the shop for you. Contact me at cncara.com. We'll make it for you. We can design, make, and ship it right to your door.